2008. Four past seven. Hello from my downtown Austin. I mean, I had, I went through so many phases of having ideas about it. There were millions of ideas along the way, and uh, and of course, I was following a general vision of it from originally reading the book and then from writing the screenplay. Um, I mean, I had the movie in my head. Now it had a certain look and feel and all that, but and then and then there's the realities of like who are the actors we got, what are the locations we got, and it's sort of making an approximation of what I saw in my head with where we were. <laughs> basically following that vision I was singularly following. I mean, ben used to say that all the time, like, hey, you're the guy with the vision. That's why we're all here, because you have that in your head. And, uh, and I did. Uh, when we're showing up to shoot, I just want to, like, do it. And uh, everyone knew their lines. And every, we were really helped by the fact that everyone showed up knowing their lines. These are volunteer actors, some of whom, you know, read for the part a year before we called them and say here's your here's your shoot and they would show up knowing their lines i'm thinking of paul crone that horse's ass surely you don't want to set that bull loose in this china shop but he's got the expertise laser implosion thermonuclear bombs and he's very creative he might even be able to think of something that's escaped even this distinguished group mainly it was like the people that were in it were really in it like we said, they knew all their lines, but they were just gung-ho for it. And people that didn't really care that much just kind of sloughed off. Magically, people that weren't going to help that much kind of fell away and didn't get in the way. And we accrued a lot of other people that just wanted to put, put something into it just because they, I don't know, thought it was such a neat idea for a movie. And I think they could see how passionate Ben and I were for it. We were very excited about what we were doing, and they got excited too. Emergency! All ahead full! 300 meters. It's still right underneath us. 100. Collision coming. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. One thing that, uh, that I always felt comforted by was the fact that there was a chain of command. That, yeah. Uh, sure, uh, we, we liked the script, we liked uh, the way your enthusiasm and, and Ben's enthusiasm came through. But when it came down to the decision, it was Ben and you. Yeah. And then between the two of you, it was me. It was you. Right. I mean, that's one reason why it worked was because Ben came on as my, you know, lieutenant or <laughs> I don't know. I was the admiral and he was the captain. I don't know, because Ben had a lot of responsibility you know in a way because he was a producer and he was the assistant director and he was you know good at communicating with actors because of his own acting background and not that I couldn't do that but I was often so busy being the DP it just made sense for him naturally to go and confer with the actors while I was uh, trying to set up lights or cameras or stuff because otherwise we're wasting too much time but he would always like come check with me like this is what you want right. So he would get, get the idea from me, what the actor should be doing. Then he would go and tell the actors what to do. I and mean, while I was setting up equipment, I would always listen to what he was telling them. So I could say, no, 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 wait, wait, if he got it wrong. But he was, he was right like 98% of the time. It was we, like you had a shared brain. He got the vision from the script. I mean, Ben is also a talented film guy too. He, he knows the medium so we could talk as filmmakers but it was set up that way because Ben was I mean Ben was so gregarious and working with everybody but there was never a mistake about who was in charge it's not like some people came off like is Ben really the one running this because it was clearly I was like this quiet center of authority very tall and very quiet <laughs> but obviously in charge and obviously the last word on any decision but you know like Tom Wyrick would come talk directly to me. He would skip over Ben. 
and not to disrespect Ben, but he just like wanted the source because he was the lead actor. You know, he had that right. Rob, what what do you want from me in this scene? And I would say, Tom, I want this. And he would go, okay, got it, you know. And that's what's caused me to do all of these things that you think are so crazy. This thing, whatever it is, is going to keep on causing death and destruction until we determine what it is. But it, it did establish that, I don't know, mystique. It did create around me, like, kind of the comfortable bubble I needed to be in charge, but without having to, I don't know, what am I trying to say? And then sometimes, you know, there'd be moments where, like, everything stops and everyone's looking at me and Ben's putting the question to me, what are we doing? And everyone has to wait for me to think and say what we're doing. We're all here because of what's in Rob's head. And uh, he's got a movie in there and we're trying to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and we, you know, ultimately we did. I mean, that's why there is a movie. I love you, baby. I love you too, Bob. Four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one, zero, zero. You did it. And we did it the way I was comfortable doing it. And uh, that's what Ben helped me do. He didn't say, we got to do this this way because this is the way movies are made. He's like, okay, dude, I'm going to help you do it your way because it's your movie.